As a bank that focuses on business, we work with business leaders all day, every day. We have a front row seat to what's working and what has potential. The First Business Bank podcast is dedicated to sharing insights to help you work better, smarter, and faster to achieve your goals. Let's get into the show. Hello, I'm Mark Malloy, CEO of First Business Bank. Welcome to the First Business Bank podcast. Today, we're talking about commonly misunderstood business financing strategies. Businesses often face working capital challenges that come in all shapes and sizes. For instance, the age of a business, its accounts receivable and inventory turns, and many other external factors can all play a part in this dilemma. Frankly, there are many scenarios where conventional banking does not fit, and the alternatives we will talk about today, factoring and asset-based lending, can provide the optimal solution. I'm joined by one of our experts at First Business Bank today, and he's going to offer some thoughtful insight regarding working capital solutions for business. Bill, I'll have you introduce yourself before we get our conversation started. Hi, I'm Bill Elliott, and I am president of First Business Bank's Accounts Receivable Financing Group. Uh, We offer factoring and other accounts receivable financing solutions. We're a part of First Business Specialty Finance, which also offers asset-based lending products. Bill, when would a company consider factoring or asset-based lending as a financing alternative? Most of the companies that we see are companies that don't qualify for traditional bank CNI financing. Uh, The reasons for that are are either that they are early stage, uh, maybe not yet profitable, or uh, if if they're more mature, uh, they might be undergoing some financial problems, losses, and they might be in turnaround mode. So it's basically companies that that don't yet qualify for bank financing or are being asked to exit by their bank. So what types of companies make use of these kinds of credit facilities? All types of companies uh, in all different sectors. Within our portfolio, we have a number of early stage companies in manufacturing, importing, wholesaling, uh, and also a tremendous amount of service-related companies, whether they be staffing or or consulting, uh, and then also uh, a lot of uh, transportation uh, trucking companies. So maybe for the audience today, we're talking about uh, really working capital type alternatives. Can you maybe compare and contrast factoring with asset-based lending when one works and when the other maybe is a, a better alternative? Sure. Uh, factoring, uh, the requirements in factoring are somewhat less than the requirements for uh, an asset-based lending facility. In factoring, since we are actually purchasing the invoices of our client and we're not lending to our client, the financial health of our client is not as important to us. So we really focus on the quality of their customers. And if their customers are strong, um, in, in most cases, we can do Uh, the transaction, we can finance the company's receivables. Companies that have uh, most of their balance sheet uh, concentrated in accounts receivable uh, are very good candidates for factoring. With respect to asset-based lending, uh, the parameters are a little bit stricter. Uh, Because it is lending, the financial health of the company it does matter somewhat, uh, although not nearly as much as what a bank might require for their financing. So in general, we want to see that our client is cash flow positive and also that their assets are, are good and that we can lend against them. One of the things that we do at First Business Bank is in our asset base lending facilities, we lend up and down the balance sheet. So we'll lend against not only accounts receivable, but we'll also lend against inventory equipment and commercial real estate. And so if we see that the value of that collateral is strong, we 
may very well fund a transaction where the company itself might be relatively weak, might be in a turnaround mode. You use the word positive cash flow, and I've described often that traditional bank financing is really cash flow lending first than collateral next. And in your business, it's kind of the the flip side of that. You really are looking at quality of of assets um, or collateral. Is that a is that a fair statement? Uh, it is a fair statement. And uh, w- when I talk about cash flow positive, really on on the asset based lending side, what we're looking for is that the company is throwing off enough cash to service whatever uh, structured term debt. Uh, that they have and that they can make all of their interest payments. They do not have to be profitable. All we want to see is that they're at a point where we feel relatively comfortable that they can service their debt. Bill, can you um, maybe provide an example for those listening today of a typical uh, factoring client of first business, if there's any such thing as typical, but but um, maybe describe a, a generic situation that might crystallize it for those that are listening and watching today. We have um, a company that is relatively early stage, uh, been in business a few years now, uh, has not been profitable, and uh, they uh, import seafood and they sell to uh, distributors, uh, restaurant chains here in the United States. And they get trade terms from their overseas suppliers. So they have their inventory financed by their suppliers, uh, but they they came to us because they needed receivable financing on their outstanding uh, accounts receivable. And so we, looked at at them and even though they uh, are not profitable, their customers are strong. And because of that, we were able to offer them a factoring facility with an advance rate of 90% against their accounts receivable. And in in that way, we, uh, we speed up their cash flow, allows them to pay their overseas vendors faster. Talk about the qualifications for factoring versus asset-based lending. On the factoring side, the biggest qualification is that our clients' customers have good credit because because we're basing a lot on the customer's ability to pay. Uh, With respect to the client themselves, we do try to avoid situations where the owner of our client might have a, a criminal background or um, is on a specially designated national list, uh, things like that we avoid. Also, we look for uh, other liens on the accounts receivable, other UCC filings. And since we're purchasing the invoices, we cannot have anybody else uh, with a UCC filing on the accounts receivable. Those are the main criteria. Uh, Mm -hmm. While we do request uh, financial statements and things like that, we're not really basing our credit decision on that. It's much more the quality of their customers. Then compare that to uh, asset-based lending. Uh, On the asset-based lending side, I I mentioned the um, the cash flow positive situation before. Um, The other thing that we look at there, again, is the strength of the collateral. But since we're lending on on different types of assets, we do additional analysis. So on the inventory, uh, equipment, real estate, uh, we we might get appraisals on all of that. And uh, then we, as we structure the transaction, we we put an advance rate there that is in line with the liquidation value of of those assets. The more and the greater the asset quality is, and the more that we might have in excess availability, 
it allows us to be more flexible with companies that may not be as profitable, cash flow may not be as strong. Uh, if we know that the value of the assets is there, uh, we, we can be flexible. So if someone is listening in today on this conversation and know little about these two alternatives, and they might be thinking, well, asset-based lending sounds more complicated. It sounds like I have more hurdles to jump through and factoring seems really simple. Is that is that the only decision criteria they should consider? No, um, companies should consider where they fit in, in the overall financing market. And the reason for that is that factoring in general is a little bit more expensive than asset-based lending. And uh, and then regular uh, a regular bank facility is less expensive than um, than asset based lending. So a company should find out where they stand in the market and what they qualify for. And at First Business Bank, what we do is if we have an inquiry where where a company is looking for financing and they contact me or my group, if we see that they better fit with our asset based lending group then we refer the transaction over there uh, and back and forth. So if a company is not sure where they stand, the best thing to do would be to speak to First Business Bank and and we could give them an honest appraisal of uh, what they qualify for. So we've used the term factoring. The business unit that, that you're the president of is called accounts receivable financing. Are there other terms that maybe describe a similar Uh, type arrangement by industries? There are in the industry terms such as uh, freight financing, um, payroll funding, ledgered line financing. uh, They all refer back to uh, a factoring product. Uh, The thing that unites all of them is that the financing source is legally purchasing the receivables. Uh, so if if a company sees that, then it's factoring. So what types of businesses or industries would typically use accounts receivable financing? Uh, in our portfolio, we, we have everything from suppliers to the automotive industry. We have uh, various types of staffing companies, IT consulting companies, food service, basically any company that has commercial accounts to receivable, which means the receivables are due from another company, uh, we can finance with the exception of a couple of industries that are very specific. uh, And those industries are medical insurance receivables and construction receivables. And there are specialists out there that only do those industries because uh, they're so specific. So what are some common misunderstandings about factoring or accounts receivable financing? There are about 700 factoring companies in the United States. Uh, Most of them are smaller uh, privately owned companies. The first misconception is that the industry or the or the companies in the industry might not be uh, of the highest level ethics um and over time certain things have happened that have have caused that perception uh, what i will say is that in the industry there are there are plenty of very ethical companies that are doing this and in the case of first business since we are a regulated bank, we, we have to uh, adhere to, to the highest level of ethics. The second misconception is that it is tremendously expensive. Uh, again, with, with 700 companies out there, there are some that are very expensive. However, at First Business Bank, the rates that we offer are, are very competitive in the market in most cases, lower than than what our competitors might offer. I think it's a great point that you made, and I think it's a key to the success that we've had 
and the positioning in the marketplace as a subsidiary of a federally regulated, state regulated bank, there really is a tremendously high bar that we have to get to and stay at. And that has to have some competitive advantages that um, our prospects and our clients need to consider. Is that a fair statement? Yes, absolutely. Um, We are very careful when we're issuing proposals to make sure that we're not going to uh, have to amend them significantly at a later date. We're very careful uh, about treating our clients uh, the way that we would like to be treated, uh, the way hopefully that we treat each other within the bank, uh, and the way that our regulators expect us uh, to treat people. A thought here, or the way I think about your business and asset-based lending is I I often describe it as there's kind of four situations where asset-based lending um, or accounts receivable financing uh, might be the best alternative. That's with startup companies, with companies experiencing rapid growth, companies that have been challenged by economic situations, poor financial performance, or, or what have you. And then the fourth is ownership change or a recapitalization that occurs. Is that fair to look at it that way? Are there more even than what I've described? I think that is a a very fair statement. And we have clients in our portfolio that that fit all of those categories. One thing that we we do a significant amount of actually is in the technology space um, because those companies, many of them are early stage. Many of them have gone through a pre-revenue stage where they have lost a lot of money um, and now are starting to generate revenue but are not quite there yet. And um, those are, t- are companies that we we can help quite a bit. And once they hit their critical mass and now begin to become cash flow positive and have larger asset levels, uh, they can then qualify for an asset-based lending arrangement, or if they're within uh, the footprint of First Business Bank, uh, a a bank facility itself. So um, we very much like to, uh, to work with these early stage companies. Yeah, that's a great point to make, one that I think it's critical and is something that First Business Bank can offer is there there really is a continuum of service that we're talking about here, right, in terms of factoring or accounts receivable financing, asset-based lending, and possibly and ultimately sort of conventional bank financing, all at, as you described before, essentially lower costs of that service. Yes, absolutely. Well, Bill, thanks for taking time to share your thoughts and experiences with our audience today. And to you, our audience, thanks for listening to the conversation. We hope you found this topic helpful and now have a better understanding of the nuances of funding your company's working capital needs. Join us next time on the First Business Bank podcast. If you want more content like what you just heard delivered straight to your inbox, go to firstbusinessbankpodcast.com. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the First Business Bank podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave a quick rating of the show. Thanks so much for listening. First Business Bank, member FDIC.